Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another exciting lecture with your favorite speaker, Dr. Ronald J. Brown. Our topic for today is the Statue of Liberty. Every country, whether it's a relatively new country, such as the United States, or a very ancient country like Egypt and China, Every country has symbols. We recognize symbols. As soon as you see the Statue of Liberty, you think of, oh, that's New York. That's a symbol of America. Or on the slide, you see me in front of the Statue of Jesus in Brazil. Well, whenever you go to Rio de Janeiro, you see the statue right away. You think of Brazil. The Eiffel Tower is a symbol of Paris and France, the pyramids of Egypt. Think of the Parliament and Big Ben in London. So every country has symbols, just like it has holidays to celebrate its national history, just like it has songs, national anthems and patriotic songs. Every country has a flag whether it's a state of Israel with a star of David or Iran with the Islamic quotation on it or the United States with simple stars and stripes. Each of these communicates a message. When we look at this flag of Israel and the star of David, we think we know right away it is a Jewish state and Muslims and Christians are minorities with limited powers. For example, when we see the flag of Saudi Arabia, we see Islamic writing. We know it is an Islamic state with severe restrictions on minority groups. The flag of the United States, well, it's simply stars and stripes. It's a secular symbol, and it can be embraced by everybody. It doesn't say the United States is Catholic or Protestant or Jewish or Buddhist. So symbols have power. And the Statue of Liberty here in New York Harbor has power. It communicates a message. But symbols change over time. Symbols evolve. They take on new meanings. And that's what we're going to explore today. The course of the Statue of Liberty, not a very ancient monument dating back to the late 1800s, maybe 150 years old, but it has gone through such an evolution, changing meaning each generation, everybody adopting it and interpreting it differently. So let's get started on our exploration of the Statue of Liberty. Here we see the outline. Point number one, the symbol of the American people, not the government, not the president, not the Congress, but the American people. Next, it became a symbol of liberty. Liberty enlightening the world is the true name of the statue. Later, it became a symbol of immigration, symbol of diversity, symbol of patriotism, Symbol of protest during the 1960s. Symbol of American decline, used in many movies and in books, asking, is the United States a declining empire? And then finally, to wrap it up, the competition of great statues. Seems these days everybody wants the tallest skyscraper, the biggest stadium, the most beautiful Capitol building. Well, statues have taken on a life of their own, whether it's uh, Christ the Redeemer in Brazil or the Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty or the monuments being built in new areas such as China and India, Malaysia. Here again, big statue competition. Mine is bigger than yours. So let's get started on our exploration today. Well, first and foremost, a little bit of the history of the Statue of Liberty. It was designed or is conceived of by Edward René Lefebvre de la Boulier, who was a Frenchman, as the name indicates, 
1865, civil war had just ended in the United States and he was having a party dinner in his apartment in Paris. And he said, well, you know, we just finished the Civil War, 1865. Well, in 1876, the United States is going to be celebrating its 100th birthday. So he came up with the idea of making a big monumental gift from the people of France to the people of the USA. Now, he was not a government employee. The government wasn't behind this. We don't know what the French government thought. And he was going to give it to the American people. Well, did he inform the government? Well, who cares? He was going to give it as a gift from the people of France to the people of the USA. So the symbol of the Statue of Liberty from the very beginning was a symbol of American and French people. Well, he hired uh, Frédéric Auguste Bertoldi to design a monumental statue. And this is the idea that Bertoldi came up with on the right, a woman with a crown holding a book and raising a lamp on a very high pedestal surrounded by some type of a fortress. So gradually, beginning in 1865, the idea took root. The person who was hired to design Bertoldi's great statue was Gustav Eiffel. You may know of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Well, he was the one who was hired to design it. Well, the interior of the statue, as you can see from the pictures, was very much like the Eiffel Tower. The only difference was the Statue of Liberty was covered with copper, so it looked like a statue. Whereas the Eiffel Tower is not covered with stone or copper or anything, you see, you see all of the steel beams, the steel girders, which are surrounding, which are inside the skeleton of the statue. So with the Eiffel Tower, you see the skeleton. Whereas in the Statue of Liberty, it is covered over with copper. Well, the statue was one part, but as Bertoldi said, it should be raised on a very high pedestal or a very high platform. Well, this was going to be the contribution of the American people. Build the pedestal and France, the people of France, will build the statue. So it was a common effort between the American people and the French people. On the left, you see Richard M. Hunt, who was a great architect at the time, and he undertook the job of designing and building the pedestal. Well, to raise money for both the statue and the pedestal, both Hunt and Bartholdi and uh, everyone else involved had to raise money. Once again, it was a people's job. The government was not giving millions of dollars or French francs to build it. And so other people got involved. Joseph Pulitzer, the great publisher of newspapers, came up with the idea of uh, asking people to donate money. And here in the newspaper article, you see the fund needs but $324.54. Well, what he did was he said, if you donate money, even if it's only a dollar, I will publish your name in my newspaper, The World. Well, who, want, who didn't want to see their name in the pages of the newspaper? I mean, I'm even thrilled when I see something in the New York Times uh, that mentions my name. Who wouldn't? And so the money started coming in to build the pedestal. Articles were published, Harper's Weekly, 6 December, 1884. Even Liberty demands something substantial to stand upon. You can't just put the statue on the ground. 
You need funds to build the pedestal. Life magazine, same year, old Lady Liberty waiting for funds to accrue for the pedestal. I mean, people, start donating your money. This is going to be a big occasion for the United States to receive this wonderful statue. Well, it was finally finished, not in 1876, but 10 years later. There was trouble getting the pedestal built, problems ra raising the money, problems with transporting the statue and giant crates across the Atlantic in pieces. But finally it was done and it was welcomed with great celebration. Presidents came, governors came, mayors came, and they celebrated the statue. The harbor was filled with ships, navy ships, giant cruising boats, and rowboats probably, where everybody wanted to get out there and see the festivities, the flags, the bands, the marching to celebrate the dedication of the statue. Ten years late, but still, it was finally finished. The original name and the correct name until today is Liberty Enlightening the World. Various parts were well known, how tall it is, the torch, the lamp which it's holding, the tablet, how big it is. Let's see, the statue weighs 450,000 pounds. It was put on Bedloe's Island, which you see on the right, uh, and a little park. The island was too small, so it had to be expanded a little bit to accommodate the pier, which you see when you take the boat to visit it, you get off at the pier and walk down the passageway past a little museum and restaurant, and then you go to the flagpole and you turn right and you can visit the statue. So it was finally finished. Well, it was a symbol of the a gift from the French people to the American people. Not governments, not presidents, not mayors, not armies, not countries, but people. Well, very quickly, it became a symbol of liberty is what it was intended. Liberty enlightening the world. Now, when you look at the statue from lower Manhattan, you do not see the face of the statue. You see her rear end because she is facing the ocean. And as the title, Liberty Enlightening the World, indicates liberty, American liberty is an export product. We are exporting American style liberty to the world. Now, this is a very powerful idea in American history. When we fought Hitler and Mussolini and when we went to war in Vietnam and Iraq and Afghanistan and all the other places where we've gone to war, we always justified the war saying we were bringing liberty and freedom to these people. We were not going to dominate them and exploit them. We were not a colonial power to get rich. We were taking liberty to these people. So the Statue of Liberty became a symbol of the exporting of American liberty to the world. Well, there have been a history of giant statues. We see the Colossus of Rhodes in Greece, the Lighthouse of Alexandria. So this giant statue in New York Harbor was part of a long history of giant statues in harbor, whether they're a lighthouse or a statue holding a lamp. The Statue of Liberty has a long history of giant statues, giant structures as lighthouses. So New York and the United States became a beacon of liberty. Also significant, it is a woman 
Statue of Liberty, it's Mrs. Liberty. It's not Mr. Liberty. This also has a long history. Liberty has been portrayed in ancient Greece, in ancient Rome, and in the French Revolution. Liberty has been portrayed as a woman. We talk about Lady Liberty. Now, many of the symbols, such as the crown or in the statue of, that you see on the left by an Italian Pio Freddi of 1872, Liberty is standing on broken chains. It's again breaking the chains of slavery. On the right, we see a French version with a little red cap on her head. Once again, Lady Liberty. During the French Revolution, 100 years before the Statue of Liberty, once again, we see a, a coin which was issued by France, very much reflecting the Statue of Liberty, wearing a Roman toga, crown, not holding a lamp in this case, but uh, a woman representing liberty. On the right, see another painting of the French Revolution, Lady Liberty with the French flag leading the masses of people in a war against the kings and dictators and emperors of the world. So once again, Lady Liberty has a long history as a symbol. There again, in 1798, we see a, a, a postcard with once again, Lady Liberty, the stars and stripes with the American flag standing beside a general. And Joseph Hopkinson wrote, Hail Columbia. And it's uh, described Columbia, the United States, as a land of heroes where freedom was born. So let independence be our boast. So once again, portraying liberty as a woman has a very long and rich history. Now, before the Statue of Liberty was built, there were other representations of liberty as a woman. On the left, you see a painting showing a manifest destiny, the United States expanding across the continent chasing the buffaloes and exterminating the Indians and the wild animals ahead of them. And with European immigrants chopping down the trees and making farms and bringing telegraph lines and railroads behind her. Once again, the United States as represented by a woman. Columbia calls World War I calling on soldiers to join the army, to spread liberty around the world. And here again, we see Lady Liberty, not with a lamp, but with a flag and a sword, not with a crown, but for the cap with the stars and stripes. So America has always identified its version of liberty and freedom with a woman. Now, the Statue of Liberty has many symbols. For example, the seven rays on her crown represent the seven seas and the seven continents. She's not holding a book. She's holding a tablet. And on the tablet is July 4th, 1776. Now, the tablet is in the shape of a keystone. And that is because Pennsylvania is called the Keystone State because it was at the center of the 13 colonies, six to the north and six to the south. And so the center stone in an arch was Pennsylvania. So it is a tribute to the role of Pennsylvania. Her feet, she's not standing still. Look at her back foot. She's ready to lift it up and move forward meaning liberty is marching forward. It's not stay static, 
standing there. It is moving forward. The broken chains, breaking the chains of kings and emperors and dictators, breaking the chains of slavery. A recent civil war had given liberty to the slaves. The pedestal has various levels. The torch is the light of liberty, enlightening the world. She's wearing a toga. She's not wearing blue jeans and a tank top. Uh, once again, hearkening back to Rome and to Greece, where American liberty came from. Liberty does not come from the Jewish Bible. That's a book of kings and wars. Does not come from the Christian Bible. Because Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So American liberty had nothing to do with religion. It traced its origins back to the Greek republics, to the Roman Republic. And the statue is a lady, once again, Lady Liberty. Well, that's what the statue meant in the beginning. Gift of one people to another, and then liberty, American liberty, being exported around the world. Well, by the late 1800s, a liberty took on another meaning, and this is as a symbol of immigration. In the 1880s and 1890s, millions of immigrants were flooding into the United States. Germans, English, and especially Southern Italians and Eastern Europeans. Christians, Catholics from Poland and Czechoslovakia, Jews from Russia and Poland, even Muslims from Turkey and the Balkans. So this was a big time of immigration. And when the ship sailed into New York Harbor, first thing they saw towering on the, on the horizon was the Statue of Liberty was the tallest building in New York City. And so as soon as the immigrants saw the statue, that meant they had finally arrived in New York. Well, a Russian Jewish immigrant herself, Emma Lazarus, was so impressed with the Statue of Liberty and how it had welcomed so many of her fellow Jews from persecution in Eastern Europe, that for her, the Statue of Liberty became a symbol of immigration. Yes, it was still called the Statue of Liberty, but it was also the statue welcoming new immigrants. In the book on the right, At the Edge of a Dream, the story of Jewish immigration on New York's Lower East Side, 1880 to 1920. By 1900, there were half a million Jews in the Lower East Side, speaking Yiddish and from all over Eastern Europe. Ellis Island had become the main port of entry for immigrants. I have ancestors who went through Ellis Island. Most of my ancestors came over uh, in the 17 and early 1800s, but by the late 1800s, Ellis Island was the main immigration area. It is today a museum. But on the picture on the left, you see the Grand Hall, where millions of people every year would go through. They'd be checked for their health. Uh, they would be examined, and then they would uh, if everything was okay, they would take a boat, as you see in the picture on the right at the bottom. They would go to New Jersey to get on the train to go to Pennsylvania or Ohio or wherever. Or they would take a boat and come to Manhattan or Queens or Brooklyn or Staten Island, wherever they planned to settle. The upper right, you see the Ellis Island as it is today. In fact, two islands connected by one building. The red dotted line was the original Ellis Island, which belonged to New York. But New York expanded the island 
by putting dirt and stones in the water, building the island into a large island and covering it with buildings. Well, Emma Lazarus in 1883 wrote a poem about the Statue of Liberty. She called it the New Colossus, which was the Greek word for a giant statue. And she wrote that the statue in New York Harbor was not like those of Greek fame. It was the statue does not have a sword in her hand, taking lands and conquering other people. Our statue is a mighty woman with a torch and her name is the mother of exiles, the mother of refugees. And her lamp, which she holds high, is a worldwide welcome. And the statue is saying, um, we are leaving the ancient lands of Europe. We are immigrants. And the final line is very famous. Give me the statue. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled, your fearful masses of people yearning, trying to breathe free. Give me the wretched, the terrible refuse, the terrible garbage as you view them of Russia, and Poland, and Southern Italy. Send these poor people, the homeless, the storm-tossed people to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. So for Emma Lazarus and for the millions of immigrants, the Statue of Liberty was a symbol of immigration. Well, eventually this poem was carved in metal and attached to the base of the statue. So it had become a new statue in a way, a statue representing immigrants. There is a wall of honor where anybody who believes that their ancestors came through uh, Ellis Island or anybody who wants to make a donation to the restoration of Ellis Island, if they gave a certain amount of money, they could have their name inscribed on the wall of honor. My father uh, gave a donation and the Brown family, my family's not Brown, it's Boronovsky, but we changed it to Brown. So on the wall, there is a memorial, uh, um, uh, uh, the name, of one of the very first Barnowskis who came to the United States. Well, the uh, Statue of Liberty passing from a symbol of the people of France and the people of the United States became a symbol of Americans exporting liberty. It became then a symbol of welcoming masses of immigrants, whereas more recently it has been celebrated as a symbol of diversity, as masses of immigrants from the Middle East, from Africa, from China, from Vietnam and Korea, from Mexico, begin to pour into the United States. Now they're no longer arriving in ships in New York Harbor, they are arriving in airplanes or swimming across the river from Texas or being smuggled in by small boats from Cuba or Venezuela into Florida. Well, the statue has become a symbol of diversity. On the left, you see Candelisa Rice standing there dressed like the Statue of Liberty, a black woman, once again, welcoming people from around the world. In this case, Muslims being persecuted by their own governments and by wars, welcoming them to the new United States. 
And you see on the right, menorah, the Jewish candlestick used at um, Hanukkah. Well, each of the statue, little statues is holding up, not a lamp, but place for a candle to show that the Statue of Liberty has a very important symbol for the millions of Jewish migrants who came in the late 1800s and those who are arriving today from Russia and Eastern Europe and Central Asia and Israel. Hundreds of thousands of immigrants arriving every year from various countries of the world. Immigrants of India, you see the student on the left holding up the lamp, pretending that, well, I'm the Statue of Liberty, even if it's men, men holding up a, uh, an electric lamp, it is still celebrating the diversity of America. On the right, the statue of a woman from India, once again, holding up the dove, symbol of peace. Picture in the middle showing a Chinese man as the Statue of Liberty. Once again, the crown holding up the lamp with his Chinese pigtail behind him, showing that in spite of racism and opposition, the Statue of Liberty welcomes all people. African-American, Asian, Indian, Spanish, Mexican statues of liberty. When you want to show that you are very much a part of the United States, well, you portray a statue of liberty to look like you. The one on the left using the statue of liberty as an artistic expression of the outrage over breast cancer. Once again, using the symbol of a woman, saying that even the Statue of Liberty could possibly get breast cancer. So it was diversity that was being celebrated more recently by the Statue of Liberty. Well, in times of crisis, the Statue of Liberty is also a symbol of patriotism. Look at the picture on the left. You have the American Eagle. You have the flag. You have the fireworks for the 4th of July. And there is another symbol of America, the Statue of Liberty. During World War II and during World Wars, the Statue of Liberty was a symbol of patriotic Americans. Whether you were white or black or green or yellow or a man or a woman, rich or poor, Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, Muslim, living in a big city, living in a small village, during a war, you all were Americans, united by the symbols of America, American Eagle, American flag, and the Statue of Liberty. Constantly used as a symbol of patriotism. On the left, World War I, war bonds. Here again, the Statue of Liberty, but yet, militarized with a shield, taking the sword, not wearing a Roman toga, but wearing a American flag, but still with the crown of seven rays. Many Republicans wear the little badge at the top, Liberty, 1886-1986. Very often when you see politicians, you'll see them wearing flags or Statue of Liberty pins. On the right, you see one of the regiments in the war in Iraq. Uh, once again, showing the map of Iraq, the Statue of Liberty, but once again, holding a sword. 
not exporting liberty, not enlightening the world, but using the sword, hopefully, to take liberty to countries like Syria, Iraq, and other countries which we consider not very liberty-oriented. Now, of course, all of these wars had a problem. In Vietnam, we were going to take liberty to Vietnam. We had our swords and our bombers and every weapon of mass destruction, poison gas, and, uh, well, Lady Liberty was humiliated. Waterboarding and torture in Iraq horrendous war crimes in Afghanistan. I mean, sometimes a Lady Liberty is not so happy with what American soldiers are doing in her name. So there you see a uh, Lady Liberty scandalized and weeping at what was being done by the American government in her name. Liberty appears everywhere, postcards, coins. We see the $50 Liberty coin. Um, uh, the uh, that's the, uh, what's that? It's a million dollar bill. I don't know whether it's authentic or not, but what better thing to put on it than the Statue of Liberty? Using the Statue of Liberty as a patriotic symbol. When anybody in the world sees the Statue of Liberty, they know exactly what country it comes from. Even the Chinese, when they had their Tiananmen Square uprising against the communist uh, regime, they erected a plaster copy of the Statue of Liberty. On the right, you see it uh, with the flags demanding, demanding liberty and Mao Zedong on the wall of the Forbidden City staring at him. And very soon, the Chinese government massacred large numbers of people. We still don't know how many. And uh, Statue of Liberty was destroyed. So even foreign countries using Statue of Liberty for political purposes. Saturday Evening Post of 1934, rising nationalism. Fourth of July, 1934, World War II is on the horizon. The Great Depression, you can see the storm, the waves in the front of the picture, ready to overthrow the statue. But yet, we would overcome the Great Depression and go on to win World War II. <clears throat> well, advertising is also jumping on the bandwagon. So the Statue of Liberty cannot just be a patriotic symbol but it is a symbol of America used very often in advertising. Almost famous cigarettes using the Statue of Liberty. McDonald's holding the golden arches high. Absolute vodka. Oil companies. NASCAR. Home Depot. Levi blue jeans or multicolored jeans. Here again... Um, the symbol remains. Now you can change the symbol. It can be of liberty, it can be of peoplehood, it can be of nationalism, but it always has a powerful appeal as a symbol. Well, anytime you visit Manhattan, you can go into any store and you will find Lego statues. You will find gold plated statues, huge statues, small statues, key rings with statues on them. The painting on the left by Peter Max sold a number of years ago for over $12,000. Store FAO Schwartz has its famous Lego Statue of Liberty. 
These are just some of the Statues of Liberty which are sold when you visit Fifth Avenue. Imagine buying that one on the left and taking it home on an airplane or in the backseat of your car uh, as a souvenir. Well, you might be happy with a smaller one made of in every color from plastic to metal to solid gold. Well, the Statue of Liberty continues to evolve. Or in the 1960s, it became a symbol of protest. On the right, you see one of the Beatles during the Vietnam War saying, the symbol of the Statue of Liberty should be liberty peace and freedom not used to send American armies to massacre millions of Vietnamese or Cambodians, or later on, hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, of Syrians, of Afghanis, saying that the symbol should be a symbol of peace. On the left, you see a scene from Poland where you take the Statue of Liberty and he is spanking the Communist Party, saying, get out of here, communists. We want liberty. Once again, a universally recognized symbol. The Statue of Liberty has been attacked and it has been occupied. When you see the picture on the left, it is a protest against the war of Vietnam. Once again, the, uh, the posters covering her eyes. Our Statue of Liberty should not see what the Americans are doing in her name in Vietnam. She is ashamed of what is going on. On the right, you see a skeleton statue of liberty, claiming that in countries like China and Iran and other places where there are dictatorships or oppressive governments, the Statue of Liberty is being murdered. In the middle, you see Big Ben, where I was just a couple of weeks ago, telling people that the Statue of Liberty supports the Kyoto Treaty against pollution. And that the modern Statue of Liberty should be wearing a mask to protect against pollution. So once again, using the Statue of Liberty as a symbol of protest, protest against big business, against pollution, and that the Statue of Liberty would never stand for these terrible things that are happening in the world today. Up in the upper left, no Muslims allowed a Statue of Liberty portrayed as Donald Trump. That was really an outpouring of anti-Donald Trump posters and articles uh, um, comparing his actions with what the Statue of Liberty represents, saying the uh, Statue of Liberty would never uh, call on a ban of Muslim immigration. Below that, you see Donald Trump sexually molesting the Statue of Liberty, saying that he is anti-American. In the middle, you see their Spiegel, once again, Donald Trump, and his racism, his anti-women attitudes, his other crimes uh, has basically murdered the Statue of Liberty. Now, when anybody looks at that in Germany or around the world, they recognize Donald Trump and they see that he has massacred the universal symbol of liberty. Above that, anti-litter. Litter is a slap in America's face and yours. Can you imagine garbage scattered all over the Statue of Liberty? The Statue of Liberty would be horrified. National Geographic 
dramatizing sea level rising, saying, well, the rate things are going pretty soon, the Statue of Liberty is going to be drowned in rising sea levels. And below that, refugees welcome. So people went up to this statue and had a uh, this banner hidden, and they said, the Statue of Liberty welcomes immigrants. So here again, Statue of Liberty used as a symbol of political protest, protest against rising sea levels, litter, Donald Trump, Muslim ban, all of these the Statue of Liberty would not approve of. Even with the COVID and the uh, monkeypox, protect yourself, get vaccinated, wear your mask. Even the Statue of Liberty has her vaccination card and the Statue of Liberty would be wearing a mask. Now here again, you had many people who refused to comply. Many um, Christian fundamentalists, many Orthodox Jews um, um, would not wear masks, would not be vaccinated, causing the further spread and deaths of many people because they refused to be vaccinated. But the message here is uh, the Statue of Liberty supports vaccination and wearing the mask. Well, the Statue of Liberty has also been used to show the decline of America. I love the last scene in the Planet of the Apes where the hero on the right is riding his horse. He doesn't really know where he's at, but he sees all these ruined buildings and cities and bridges. And he rounds a corner, and there in front of him, he sees a toppled Statue of Liberty still holding up the lamp. The crown is broken and bent, meaning that the United States is on a decline. Now, whether apes take over and turn Americans and humans into slaves or not, that is still to be seen. But the destroyed, the damaged Statue of Liberty has come to symbolize the decline and fall of America. Cloverfield, a, a film, sci-fi film about the end of the world, once again showing the destroyed Statue of Liberty. On the right, the poster showing that America is no longer the land of liberty and freedom, no longer enlightening the world, but it has become an instrument of oppression, of waterboarding, of genocide, and of torture. And so many of these people who have this view that the United States is in decline very readily adopt the Statue of Liberty symbol and use it to show that the death of America is portrayed as the death of the Statue of Liberty. Donate your coats. Once again, poverty in the United States, hunger, homelessness. This is the end of America. Above that, poverty, homelessness, child's children with no clothes is a symbol of the end of America. In the middle, refugees welcome, no ban, no wall put up by Amnesty International showing that bans on refugees building walls is going to be the end of America. 
I love the one on the right. You see the obese Statue of Liberty, God, drinking Coca-Cola and eating pizzas and hamburgers, uh, that the American population is declining of ob by obesity. I always know when I go to foreign airports, like this summer when I was in Paris and uh, looking for my gate to catch my flight, you always know which flights are leaving towards the United States. You don't even have to look at the sign. You just look at the people sitting around waiting for the next flight. If the average person is over 200 pounds, you know that they are Americans and they are going to New York or someplace in the United States. You see a flight going to China or going to Rome or England, uh, everybody is about 120 or 30 pounds. And in fact, that's a big problem for American airlines. So many fat people trying to squeeze into seats that were not made for them. The picture in the middle, a good symbol of the end of the United States as a world power. The lamp is dropped and is broken at her feet. The crown is broken and she is weeping because America is on a decline. The one on the right, a woman climbed up to the base of the statue, rise and resist the Black Lives Matter movement. Racism in the United States, tearing the country apart Crime in the subways of New York. Here again are these signs of the decline and fall of the United States. Book by Edward Luce. Time to start thinking. America and the specter of decline. But look at the statue. It's not a foreign enemy who is destroying America. It is suicide. We are killing ourselves with racism, with pollution, with obesity, with drugs, with crime. We are killing ourselves. Film in, uh, film in the middle, America, imagine the world without her. Once again, using the symbol of the Statue of Liberty being destroyed. Power and willpower in the American future, showing a Statue of Liberty fading away. Implosion, can America recover from its economic and spiritual challenges in time? Is it too late? to save America. And even the word implosion, it's not an explosion, it's not a bomb, it is implosion. We are dying from within, committing suicide. Well, the Statue of Liberty as a symbol has really spread around the world and every country now is on the bigger and the better statue competition. Here we see on the right, we see Christ the Redeemer in Brazil, followed by the Statue of Liberty. So dwarf compared to the giant statue of in uh, Myanmar, in Burma, Spring Temple Buddha in China, and now the Statue of Unity in India. My God, he could put the um, Statue of Liberty in his pocket. But here again, these are symbols of a religion, symbols of a country, and these are now an, every country wants its symbol. Now, along with giant statues, people want giant bridges, they want giant opera houses, they want tallest skyscrapers in the world. But among these many, uh, competitions is the competition for the biggest statue in the world. I visited all these places. You see Christ the Redeemer 
built in 1931, towering over Rio de Janeiro. Fascinating city. Geography is phenomenal. Beautiful view from the statue. Well, that's 98 feet tall. Statue of Liberty is 305, three times as tall. Once again, not dominating the city, but on an island looking out to the ocean. This is the Burma statue of 2008. Um, and on the right, you see the giant uh, Chinese statue, Spring Temple of 2008, 420 feet, spectacular views especially when they are standing in an isolated position and even raised uh, on a pedestal or a series of steps um, as the Spring Temple is the second tallest statue in the world. The tallest statue in the world, number one, is the Statue of Indian Unity. And this is at 597 feet tall, the tall, tallest statue in the world. Once again, when you look at it, you have no idea how tall it is because it's not surrounded by buildings. It is in an isolated position and you have no idea how tall it is. But if you look at the picture on the right, you see a person is about the height of one of his toes. So you can imagine how monumental this statue must be. And this is recent. This is 2018 um, when it was finished. So statues, monuments, symbols of countries remain very powerful. I'm sure that when humans start migrating to Mars, and start building cities and civilizations, they too are going to start building giant monuments and statues to the new civilization on Mars. And in fact, um, I just spent uh, um, a couple of weeks in London and Paris this summer taking pictures of statues. Just recently, these statues in London were in the news when the Queen died. Um, and London is filled with statues and pedestals and monuments. On the right, that's me, uh, in uh, New York, a big monumental sculpture in front of a building. I don't remember where it is, in mid-Manhattan. Once again, cities decorate themselves with symbols, with statues, with monuments. And these have meaning. Like the Statue of Liberty, meanings change going through all the stages of evolution of the statue um, of every statue. Still, the um, statues and symbols and monuments retain a fascination. China, up and coming country. Every city has its monumental building, its statue, its monument to itself. So that brings us to an end. Uh, this is Dr. Ron Brown logging off. If you have any comments you'd like to send me, just write to uh, ronbrownmedia at gmail.com and I will respond uh, usually pretty quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I look forward to seeing you in the future at another Fascinating lecture by Dr. Ronald J. Brown. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you in the future.